Kate and Chloe are very alike. They're interested in the same things and they live in the same town. Kate lives here in this small flat. Her family isn't very well off and she shares a room with her sister. She takes the bus to school every day. Chloe goes to a school a few streets from Kate. She drives the car she got for her 17th birthday to school. She always has the best clothes and the latest tech. It's clear Chloe has a better lifestyle than Kate. So what could we do to improve Kate's life? We could make Kate and Chloe more equal by giving some of Chloe's wealth to Kate. This would make Kate slightly better off. But now neither of them could afford the car, the clothes or the tech. Or we could improve Kate's living standards by tackling the things that make her poor in the first place. The difference between these two options is whether you want to focus on tackling inequality or alleviating poverty. Tackling inequality is always in the headlines, but a more equal society isn't necessarily a better off society, as seen in 1970s Britain, and in more extreme examples like Cuba and Venezuela, where achieving equality has been the end goal. Both here and abroad, the best way to help the poor is to introduce policies that encourage free markets, and it really works. Since 1990, the global rate of absolute poverty has halved. In fact, we're currently witnessing the fastest fall in global poverty the world has ever seen. So why is Kate still struggling? Focusing on inequality has distracted us from policies that would help alleviate poverty. Things like liberalizing planning laws, encouraging competition in energy markets, and giving people access to better education. These changes would really improve Kate's life and take her and thousands of girls like her out of the poverty trap. Now which would you choose? Tackling inequality or stamping out poverty?